Can we make a joyful noise unto the Lord on tonight? Can you put those holy hills hands together on tonight and bless the name of your Lord? I'm talking about your Savior, your King, your mighty God. How y'all doing tonight? I'd like to testify for a moment by using Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul to be in the building tonight. Does anyone have anything, any reason to be thankful on tonight? Hallelujah. 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 Good evening, saints. On behalf of Pastor Eric W. Hoskin and Lady Dr. Sherry, we'd like to greet you with a hearty God bless you and say welcome. Welcome to Midweek Worship. You can put your hands together now. Amen. To our online audience, we greet you in the name of Jesus, and we say that we thank you for joining us on tonight. Would you please stand with me for the reading of our mission and our vision? Here at the Word of God, our mission is to equip, empower, and inspire all using the word of God. Our vision is to save and transform lives using the word of God with the intent of sending believers back into the community to make an impact. Would you please continue to stand for the reading of God's word. Tonight's word comes from Psalm 63, verse 1 through 8. Psalm 63, verse 1 through 8. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my lips shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Let's go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you on tonight, O oh God. I have emptied myself out, O oh God, that you may speak through these lips of clay, O oh God. So, Father, won't you have your way in this building on tonight, O oh God? Your people have come in here, O oh God, carrying burdens, O oh God, of all sorts, O oh God. And we ask you, O oh God, that you will give them uh, an exchange on tonight, O oh God, that they will be able to lay down the burdens that they carry, O oh God, so that you, O oh God, may give them rest, O oh God. God, for the needs of all of your people, wherever they're at and whatever they stand in need of, oh God, we ask, oh God, that you would move right now upon them, oh God, move in their lives, move in their hearts, oh God, as we trust you, oh God, in this season, oh God, we ask, you, oh God, that you would raise up laborers, oh God, for the harvest is plentiful, oh God, but the laborers, oh God, are being raised up even on tonight, oh God, we thank you for a spirit of courage, we thank you for a spirit we thank you, O oh God, for sending us out, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for growing us up, O oh God. Somebody in here, O oh God, has some questions, O oh God. But we know, O oh God, that you are the God that answers, O oh God. So we ask, O oh God, that you would give them clarity and you answer every one of their questions, O oh God. 
Father, someone in here needs a healing, oh God. I know you for myself to be Jehovah Rapha. So, Father, I thank you right now, oh God, that in this atmosphere, healing is made available. Healing is available on tonight. Healing is available. Father, for the word that shall go forth on tonight, oh God, I pray that you would give us ears to hear and a heart to receive, oh God. Remove every obstacle or any distraction in our path, oh God. If there is anything, oh God, that would try to come up against your people, oh God, we plead the blood of Jesus over them right now in the name of Jesus. From the crown of their heads to the very soles of their feet, we plead the blood of Jesus. Father, we give your name glory, honor, and praise. You alone are worthy of the praise. Oh Lord, we know no other help but you, oh God. If you don't do it, oh God, when will it be done, oh God? So we look to you, oh God, from where the heals, from where our help comes from. You on this night in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. I know it's Wednesday night, but we came to give God glory. I said it's Wednesday night, but we came to give God glory, right? It's a real simple song it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good.
thanks for he is good. Come on, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Amen. Amen. Give me just a little bit. Amen. I'm still hoarse from all the singing the men were doing on Sunday. Amen. And since they wouldn't let me get in the choir, I was singing over in my little corner. And so I was singing louder because I didn't have a mic. And I'm hoarse. Well, I'm in church. Let me stop. It just wasn't going well at all. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are y'all, how y'all feeling tonight? Amen. Today is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, give thanks, for he is good, for he is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, for the King of glory shall come in. Who is this? <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. I get excited when I think about think about Jesus. Listen, I want, before we begin, a couple of announcements and sh- acknowledgements and shout outs that I do want to give. Um, we have been experiencing uh, several uh, deaths and loss of life and so we want to extend from the Word of God Christian Fellowship Church our heartfelt prayers uh, whether it's to the Bush family uh, and uh, I know Sister Sybil had to lay a loved one to rest uh, and uh, so many more brother Tory Smith and laid his mother to rest and then his wife had to lay loved one um, to rest and and so uh, brother Isaac had to lay his his mother to rest and so we we just been experiencing uh, a lot of who have had to deal with death and then we have those who have loved ones in the hospital and so we want as a church make certain that we never forget to continue to lift up in prayer. Amen. Amen. And then on the other side of it, man, we got so many folks getting engaged around here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speaking of that, uh, we had an amazing, amazing uh, marriage ministry kickoff on last night. Uh, About 40, 50 people on on the Zoom call, it was amazing, amen. And I finally got to win something. First, and I we finally, I never win nothing because always who's been at the church the longest, and so I never win. But but last night it was who who's been married the shortest? Give me give me my trophy, amen. <laughs> amen. We made three weeks. This week, amen. Come on, somebody. Book. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. All right. Well, listen, let's just jump right in it, y'all. Um, we do have our 100 men praying on next Friday. We want all of our men to be here next Friday, 100 men praying. And then next Saturday, we'll have our real men standing up meeting. And I know our ladies, um, they have their crafts and event coming. And then our salt ministry have their tea party coming so we got a lot of things whatever whatever floats your boat we got it for you amen question for you who was blessed sunday amen all right so what we're gonna do um and i i I was studying and the holy spirit showed me some new nuggets and so we may jump off like we did last week and kind of kind of kind of hear what the Holy Spirit has to say, but but today I want to hear from everybody uh, something that bless you uh, on Sunday. <laughs> she already got her hand raised. So let me, did I pray yet? Let me pray. Let me just, let me talk to Jesus first. Hold on. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We bless you. We praise you. We give you glory. We thank you for those who are in the sanctuary. We thank you for those who are online and we give you praise and honor and glory for it rightfully all belongs to you. Now be with us tonight. Speak to us as we grow in you. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 
Amen. Sister Connie Davis, we are praying for you. I see where your brother passed today. And so, brothers, Connie Davis, we are, we definitely have you covered in prayer. Amen. Amen. All right. We recap him. Sunday's message as we're in this series um, of, of trust. It's, 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 it's the totality of the series. And so we started first trusting God and understanding who God was because if we're going to put our trust in something, we need to know who we're putting our trust in. And then this, we had Easter. And then last Sunday, uh, we were trusting God with our lives, right? And so we're using Proverbs chapter 3, verses uh, 5 and 6. And uh, then this Sunday, we'll be trusting God with our families with a with a spe special twist to it. Uh, so, so let's talk about Sunday's message. Okay, so I have, we put our trust in things that do not have the divine power not to fail. Oh, and have mercy. That blessed my whole soul. So, so let's expound on that. And so what we were talking about when we broke down the definition of trust and what that word literally means to rely upon, to depend, depend upon, and isn't it interesting that we, 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 we put more trust in things that have the propensity to fail? That when I started the teaching, I, I taught us about who God was, and I talked about some of the attributes of God, that he's omnipotent, that he's omnipresent, uh, that he's omniscient, that he's all-powerful, all-knowing, he's all at the same place at the same time. And one of the characteristics about God that you, and when you study, is that he's a God uh, who is infallible, is inerrant. There's no error in him that, that whatever he says it is, regardless of what it was, it now becomes. And so he, he, he doesn't even have the capability to fail. And his track record is impeccable. But we put our trust in things, watch this, that's temporal, we put our trust in things that, that was designed to fail. That, that, and I used the illustration about we come in here every Wednesday, every Sunday, we just sit down in these seats as if we know this seat going to hold us. And so we put our trust in the seat, but the seat was not designed, watch this, out of all of the testing it had to go through, over time, 20, 30 years, this, this, this chair will wear out. But God is one who is what? Alpha and Omega. That, that, that there's no end in his his glory is unsearchable it's, it's, he, 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 can, he cannot fail and so the question is and, and this is not rhetorical why don't we trust in God why, why is it us and God as if we really think that God need our help one of the nuggets for free I give it to you he doesn't need our help he needs our obedience I'll come back and play with that in a little bit. Talk to me. Got another one, Sister Tara. Sister Tara said, let's let her double up. That's your wife now. Don't get in trouble. That's your wife. <laughs> he just left the marriage ministry. He knew I had two of them. I told him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the second one says, information does not bring transformation. Wow. Conviction does. So you can get all the information. You can read every book and be the smartest but it doesn't mean that it's, it's gonna bring transformation. So we're studying right now in the marriage ministry, the Five Love Language, phenomenal book. Great book, I mean, the great points. But until you're convicted, it's not gonna be any train, change. And if there are changes, it's gonna be temporary. It's not gonna be su sustaining. But when there's a heart and a head change, oh, let me stop. See, I'm taking base. I'm first lady, Doctor Base first, whatever we call her. Uh, she said, "I'm taking the nugget, so let me stop." I felt myself about to just preach again. Talk to me. Okay. But basically, um, you were saying that um, what we think is a, is a punishment or an attack, and it's really not. Um, he just wants us to surrender to him. Ooh. That how is it that God who created us knows us scripture says the very hair that's on our heads knows how long to put us in the pressure cooker not for punishment but not only for refining but for preparation 
and, and here's the beauty, I was studying it. Here's the beauty about, about particularly silver being, being refined, being, being, being burned. And, and, and you wonder how long it has to be, be in the fire. Uh, it, it, they say it has to be in the fire until the, 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 the blacksmith can see his reflection. So, so, so God keeps you in the fire long enough to burn off everything so that you no longer see yourself. But you start looking like, I wish I had some help. Because there's some things, and I'm getting into my sermon for this Sunday, there's some things that has to die in the new season. And we too often talk about all of the things that we got to cut off because it sounds cute. They can't go with us to the next level. We got to cut them off. And all oh, that's preachers well, that's cute. But when you really look in the mirror at who God is saying really needs to change, it, it, it ain't so much the people that we have to die. And there's some things that's in the inside of us that cannot go where God is sending us like pride, like selfishness, like ego. And so God will continue to put you on this perpetual cycle of going around and around and what you think is punishment. And he's saying, I'm not getting ready to, to, to let you lift off into you. That stuff got to die. Just one little nugget from Sunday coming, and when you hear it, shout again. Um, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? All old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. So once you're in Christ, that stuff that don't fit with Christ can't go with you, like your ego like your pride. So stop saying that you can't deal with, with, with some of these things that you str struggle with because to suggest that means that you ain't surrendered to God. Oh. Sorry, I got a follow-up question. What does surrender to God mean? Yes. Because I know that you are giving yourself to God, you putting it into his hands and, and leaving it there. But I've heard this before, Nakia, surrender to God. But what does that really mean? What does that really look like? That's my question. Um, so when you ask the question, it means that we hadn't fully surrendered yet. Because when you surrender, there's no more question. Okay, let me give it to you this way. Uh, and I use this quite often. I don't really want y'all to think that I was really bad when I was coming coming up, but it just it just preached well, okay? Um, <laughs> Y'all with me? Um, if you've been on the run from the police, you, you, you still in control, you still maneuvering, you still doing what you, but, but, but when he comes, watch this, and say freeze, put your hands up, surrender, that means that there's no more questions, there's no more talking, there's no more, and they, they, they so amazing, they says, listen, be quiet because anything you say can and will because what they're trying to get you to do is to understand that you are in a surrender state. There's nothing that you can do in this season that's going to help you in this situation. And so what we have to learn how to do is be okay with being, being silent and understanding that we don't get to determine and lay it up in the middle of the night trying to figure out how God wants us to surrender. Blind faith Literally means walking off the cliff, believing, watch this, that if God told me to walk off the cliff, either I'm a fly or he's going to catch me. So we can't sleep, we tossing and turning, and all of us struggle with this. Let that bank account heal a certain number. Whole day just met, we just are just ups, depending on, But he said in Matthew chapter six, don't worry about what you're gonna eat, what you're gonna wear. For pagans run after that. For if God, watch this, feed the birds and, 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 and the flowers who are here one day and gone the next. And you and I are much more than that. Don't you think according to the scripture that he would take care of you? 
that God, watch this, God can take care of you on his worst day that you can't for yourself on your best day. <laughs> I'm trying to not go too fast. I'm, I'm, I'm still preaching going. T talk to me. I got a couple, okay? Online? Yeah, online. Brother Keondrix Smith says, we don't change until we are convicted. Lord, have mercy. So, and conviction literally is when the the spotlight is put on you. So, so when the spotlight is put on you, watch this, now you are forced to change because watch this, you keep doing your dirt, keep doing whatever that you're doing that's not pleasing God and you make it home off grace and you be like, God, I'm not gonna do it again, whatever that is. But one of the ways that God, watch this, convicts is through exposing, to unveil, to uncover, and so when he, spot, when he shines that spotlight, when he exposes, now conviction sits in. Oh, help me in the Holy Spirit. And so I talked about, if you go back and look at it, and I may not get into it tonight, that there has to be with conviction a head and heart change. Trust in the Lord with all your, lean not to your own understanding. So when we sit in our beds trying to figure God out and when he gonna do it and why he doing it and did I do something wrong, we still leaning to our own understanding. And here's the struggle with leaning to your own understanding. You, you got therapists in here that way, that's, that's way smarter than I am. God is infinite. Do we know what infinite mean? Infinite means his knowledge is never ending. The moment in which you figure him out, he reveals another department of himself. Our minds are finite. We are only knowledgeable up until the degree of what we have learned or experienced. So, so, so there, there's a limit on, on our wisdom. And the Bible says God, his is unsearchable. So, so why do we even try to be God of our lives when our minds and what we know and understand has limits on it? That, that's why he be saying, take the limits off. He's saying, listen, truck. When, 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 and, 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 and when you expound on it, we are children of God, which means that we have access to the power of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. You, 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 you see the command and the blessing that I talked about on Sunday? It's in the New Testament. That scripture I just was Matthew chapter 6 at the end. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And, and that's where we struggle because we want to seek the kingdom and our own will. And it's a struggle because, I mean, I, I just keep it 100. When God had, re like, when he really told me that you're going to be preaching, I like that. Um. Let me just go to church with a good attendance record. Let me help in ministry and serve. Let me be the best usher. And I even be a deacon and all that type of stuff. And it was because it was my will. Fighting up against what he had already predestined. And the quicker we surrender... My, sur my, my non-surrendering caused me to have to go to hospitals and be, they thought I was coming down with a condition because my anxiety was so high because I just knew God had the wrong, like, you cannot be real. This can't be, like, you got the wrong man. And so I had a developable condition that he hadn't even, that he's cured me of, but it still flares up because of the anxiety of me trying to figure out at the middle eight, in mid-30s, now all of a sudden you're trying to come get me the pastor of church and I'm trying to tell you I'm getting ready to be in Washington, D.C., balling. <laughs> that's why I, I thought I'm dead serious. Y'all laughing like I had already had my little condo. But anyway, come on back. We don't have an issue with trust, just the object of our trust. Woo! So that's heavy. Who, who, who is the object of, of what you put your faith in? So 
Trust on the surface, just the definition is to rely on, to depend on, right? So we put more dependence on the object of this chair that we do in God. And what he's saying is, I want you to fl- just try me one time. Just test me and see. I want to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't even have room enough to receive. And the problem I think we struggle with is the test. We, we, we're, we're afraid of really, really testing. And he's saying, if you really give it all to me, what you're seeking, I promise you, it comes with, it, it, it's, it's just added, I'm, I'm going to show you, it's just added blessings. The overflow comes. The first story I, I told in the sermon Sunday was the story of Solomon. Now, you got to understand, and I gave a nugget that God specializes in turning a mess into a miracle. Because when you study scripture, Solomon, who was the third king of Israel, Saul being first, David being second, uh, Solomon is the son of, of David. But if you remember, King David, we love David. Y'all quote his Psalms, 23rd Psalm written by David. We, we say that with our eyes closed. But if you may not know about old King David, King David, who God said is a man after my own heart. He, he, he had a, a, a problem with his eyes and looking at the women. And, and it was a season in which he should have been at war but he stayed back home, so he was out of position, and he saw Bathsheba bathing. The problem with it was a lot of people want to argue and be upset with Bathsheba, talking about she knew better because she was up on top of the roof bathing because it was her her time of the month for her. But the real accountability is on David because David was supposed to be at the house. He's the king. He's supposed to be out at war. And David... Watch this. Knowing that Bathsheba was married to Uriah, but he big baller. He, who is that? No accountability circle, so they tell him who she is. He say, "Well, still bring her here." They, he, you know, had it, whatever, and uh, and and she got pregnant. And uh, when it was time for her husband to come back, the military for them to come back and rest. Uh, David, the first though, because when you sin, it'll make you sin more to cover up. That's why I say the exposing is where the conviction, when he, when he exposed you. <laughs> and, so, and so what David did, David said, listen, when, when you ride, bring him back in, but make him go to the house and lay with his wife so that it's around the same time. So that I think it's his baby. Uriah, he, he, he's so full of standard. He said, no, the way we do it as soldiers, we, we don't go back to our family. We, we stay out. With, with the soldiers. He's showing them what integrity looks like. So David like, man, that ain't going to get him. So much so, David got so mad, got so upset because now the, the tension is coming because of his act of a temporary feeling. So now he said, listen, send Uriah back out on the war, but put him on the front line. 2 Samuel 11, I think it is. Let, let's, let's make sure, t- 9 to 10. But let's make sure he, and sure enough, Uriah gets killed defending the kingdom that David is over. And David sent him out f- to be murdered. And so, and so when he died, after the 30-day 30, 30 morning, at least David waited the morning period. But anyway, after the morning period, he said, bring, bring on Bathsheba in the kingdom. Watch, watch how God works. He's chilling, thinking he got away with it. God sends a prophet by the name of Nathan, has a conversation with David and say, David, it was telling him this story about, man, if this happened, what would you do? And David said, I kill a man. Well, Nathan said, well, you the man. <laughs> Instantly. Where well, you see David pen that song where he says, cleaning me, or creating me a, a, a clean heart, a pure heart. He, he, he's convicted now because he's been exposed. When exposed comes in, particularly when you have a relationship with God, it'll make you run back to him. And so after he pins the, the psalm where he created me a clean heart, you go back and finish that story. Uh, David uh, mourns, he's crying, uh, and he, he, his, the baby at seven years old is stricken, that's seven, seven days old, is stricken, he's sick. 
And the Lord tells him that the baby not going not gonna to live. David stops eating. He lays out prostrate. He fasts and all of that. And God said, I'm still taking your firstborn. But watch how, how, how conviction kicks in. After the baby dies, David gets up, shaves himself, put lotion on. Because he hadn't eaten, got up, eat, went on to the house. And he, and he accepted the consequence of his action. And after that, watch this, God allowed him to stay with Bathsheba to have another son, and they named him Solomon. God can specialize in turning. I wish I had some help up in here. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 can, he, can, he can steal. And, and even though we're under grace now that Jesus is here in the blood of Jesus, and so our, 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 our you know, our, for, for our, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So, so though God didn't punish us the way he did back then because of the blood of Jesus, there's still consequences for, for your sin. So, so, so I said all that to say Solomon, who God calls and tells him that you're going to be the third king of Israel. You're going to sit on the throne of your father David because I made a promise with David that his kingdom would never end, that it would be everlasting. There's a lineage. There's somebody who's eventually going to come out of the house of David. Lord Jesus. <laughs> and, and, so, and so Solomon, watch this. He writes uh, over uh, 5,000 Psalms, 1,005 songs. Uh, he's the wisest man to ever live, so much so that when he is promoted to king, he's, he's immature, he's young, don't even know how to, how to rule, and, and there were two prostitutes. Y'all okay? Can I tell a, tell a story? There, there are two prostitutes uh, who, have, who, have a ba who both have babies there, and uh, they, they're in, in the room, and uh, in the middle of the night, one of the prostitutes roll over her baby, the baby dies. So she gets her little tail up and goes steal the other baby that's alive, put her dead baby over there as if the woman ain't going to recognize. And so, and so they get up the next morning. She realizes, I got a dead baby. This ain't even my baby. She sees her baby over here with the other lady. And so they, instead of getting a fight, I can tell they was about, I already know she was, she's, you, you already know how mamas are, especially with a lips, tell this whole thing, all right? So they had to go to the king. So now the king has to make a judgment on how to handle this. And so instead of him handling it because he had prayed to God, God, you made me ruler. All I want, because I'm not experienced, I just need discernment and wisdom. And God said, because you asked for, watch this, because of what you didn't ask for. I'm going to make you the wisest man to ever live. But not only that, I'm going to bless you with long life, and you're going to be the Lord, help me in here. So if, if, you, if you're obedient to God, blessings follow. So much so that God gave Solomon the wisdom to say, in the, when he was judging him, he said, here's what we'll do. Take the baby, cut that one baby that's still alive, cut him in half. And that way we'll give you half of the baby, you half of the baby. The mom who was the biological kid said, oh, no. She broke out crying, no, why? Just give her the baby. And when she said that, it let Solomon know because of her heart who the real mama was. And he was able to have that discerning heart is because he asked God for it instead of asking God for money, cars, and all that stuff. Because God said, if you get me, you're going to get the stuff. <laughs> oh, we doing all right, y'all? All right, all right. Give me, give me, give me. Talk to me. Talk to me. We got, we, we all over the place. Come on. Coming to you. When you truly submit to God, you die to self, and you say, "Lord, not my will, but, but your will. will." Lord. So y'all, y'all hear me clearly. Now, be careful, because it doesn't only happen to pastors. It generally happened to me. There were certain passages and in, in books in the Bible that I used to not preach because whatever I preached, God would typically let me go through it the week before. No, seriously, and the reason I think he let me go through it is because he wanted me to preach with, with passion of, of the experience, right? And so that was just something like, I'm just not preaching Job. I just, I, I don't feel like dealing with that. Um, and, and, and so what I've been having to pray to God to be convicted, delivered, and set free of is what she said. That 
the closer you get to God, the more you got to die to yourself. That particularly in a marriage, it's, it's no wins and losses. And so in any relationship, particularly a vertical re relationship as, a rela as well as, because if your vertical relationship ain't right, your horizontal going to be messed up. Well, where do you think we get the cross from? <laughs> and so if you don't have no vertical relationship, you, you, you cannot have a horizontal relationship. That was good. Thank you. Talk to me. And uh, one good nugget you said on Sunday, uh, we can't focus on the destiny or the promise and disrespect the process. Lord. Got to trust the process. You got to trust the process. And I think people, I think people think that that's just cliche and that's just, you know, postmodern colloquialism or just, you know, some cute saying. But, like, I, I don't know how. I, I don't even know when. But I, if God said it, I just know it's going it's, and, and, I, and I'm, can I testify for myself? I'm hanging on to a promise. That, that there's some things that God has shown me as it relates to the trajectory of my life. And I'm not talking about assets and all of that type of stuff. But I'm talking about experiencing the pinnacle of some things that I had yet to experience. The pinnacle means the highest point. That, that there's a pinnacle of love that God said that you are going to experience before. And if you haven't reached it yet and God said it, then you're not going to die before it happens. And so you got to trust the process where well, everybody else is getting up before me but you don't even know how number one unhappy they are number two you don't know what they sacrificed to get it you, you look at my now but you don't know my back then you, 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 kids can teach you the most kids don't know how many how many no's you had to say just so that they could have <laughs> come on, come on, give me, give me, give me a couple more. I, I feel the Holy Spirit trying to trying to take me somewhere, but I'm trying not to go there. Talk to me. I just wanted to say that um, I am the cake that you were baking. <laughs> I also want to say that um, I'm asking, how long am I going to be here in this oven? And when you said trust God with all your life, um, it hit a little different. Wow. I had somebody tell me that they, they, they would never look at Proverbs 3, that passage, the same ever again. Um, you know, trust with God as the goal or object means to regard him as the source of wisdom and power in all things. Here it is. And therefore making him worthy of your entire confidence. That's heavy. That means that I got to trust him with everything everything even if I've been doing it my way for X number of years that when I say I'm ready to surrender to you because that was an amazing question I've asked God that like God okay now what like I told you I surrender this like my 30th time <laughs> and God keeps showing me that I hadn't surrendered by sending me more opposition Let them bills get out of whack. I'm starting to, I'm looking on the, like, trying to find a second, third, fourth job and all this type of stuff. Yeah, whole attitude, the gas tank hit, ooh, Lord. <laughs> and, and I can tell that I'm growing. I know y'all ain't gonna testify, but even, what, this, this, this week, it was just like one hurdle after the next. Um, I took my car to the shop for free maintenance. And I get that because I knew it was taking them a while and they sending me a picture of my whole tire split. And I did okay there. I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, okay, God, I'm surrendering. So I left there and had to take my daughter's car to the shop. Uh, and I don't, I, don't, I don't even drive it. It's, it's hers. I, I, I had just, we had just spent 
over a band. I don't want to put the business out there. Tell the, tell the season saints what a band is so they can know what area. Uh, and uh, they, they, we put the car back in the shop just the same day. And uh, they came back and said they wanted another four bands. This, this a dealership. This ain't, this ain't, you like me, I'm like, okay, now God, now either you, you really, now I told you I surrendered. What we, what we, what we doing? But because I didn't flinch, because I didn't do what I normally do, call four or five people, y'all pray with me, woe is me, sending in my siblings group, y'all you come help your brother, and I, all this stuff. I just got, now whatever you're going to do. And by the time I got, because you know I'm, I'm, I'm me, I'm still going to pull up on you. Yeah, we got to have a conversation. By the time I left the conversation, we done went from 4 to 100 to 0 100. I wish I had somebody here that was going to help me shout. It, it wasn't for me to figure out why we, they now want to not charge and all of this and all that. It was just simply God saying that if you just trust me with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge me, I'm, I'm going to make your path straight. <laughs> Talk to me in the back, sis. I'm coming. Talk to me. There are commands and blessings. You keep the command, you get the blessing. You get the blessing. Th this is good so they can make sure that, that I did touch the Bible. Thank you for that, sis, because I don't want nobody to say I didn't, I didn't touch the Bible. Can you, can you put verses 1, 2, and 3 up for me? Uh, if, it, if it's going to take a long time, um, I'll, ju I'll just read them. But when you look at some scriptures, you've got to understand, uh, some promises uh, God makes, where you, do, he's not, and I'm not going to get into the theological terms, but there's some things, some promises and covenants he make uh, that you don't have to do anything. But then there are some promises in the Bible that only come based on you doing something. So when you study scripture, you can't get mad at people who are getting blessed for doing something. When you sitting over here, have been given the instructions, but you ain't doing nothing. My son, this is, a, this is a proverb he's writing, a collection of wisdom, literature, and poetry that he's writing based off of experience. Watch what he, and he's writing this to his son. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. So it's saying what you read. By this time, it was just uh, the first five books. So it was part of the Torah he's referring to. But he said, uh, all of my law, I want you to keep it. I want you to keep it. But watch the, watch the, watch the blessing. For the length of days and long life, and peace they will add to you. So, so if you obey my commands, if, if you keep them in your heart, I'm going to give you long life and I'm going to give you peace. He, 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 here's where you, you missed the shout. He, he didn't say, I'm going to stop opposition from coming. You, you, you still going to have hurdles. That's called life because life going to keep lifing. Life didn't start lifing when you came. Life was life in which your mama was here. Life was life with grandma and papa. They were going through the same things that we were going through. And the Bible says, if you keep my commands, I'm going to give you a long life. Can I give you another command and blessing? Honor thy mother, thy father. So that your what? Days can be. It's a command. And it's a blessing. And, and we just shout because we want to get to the blessing. We just want to get over to the overflow and live any kind of way. And so what God is really calling us, he really is, and folks don't like to preach it, uh, but you don't have to preach it where it's spooky, but he's calling us to be holy. He's calling us to be sanctified. That word literally just means set apart. It ain't, it's not, to be, it's not, it's not what you wear. Verse number two, he said, uh, I mean, verse number three, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your hearts. Here's the blessing. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. And, and, and some people, some people don't, don't even know for real when to, when to really shout, for real. Uh, because a lot of people just want favor with God. And don't realize that we live in a world where favor with man will bless you. Uh, permission to speak. So, so I, so I, so I, I was doing a few miles over the speed limit. I was doing a few.
few miles over the speed limit. And uh, on that day, I was doing a few miles over the speed limit. The cop had an attitude. What, what, I, I'm good, I had no attitude. If he hadn't pulled me over, I wouldn't. So you got attitude, because you pulled me over, right? So anyway, he pulled me over, and Ted was going to have an attitude, because he, he didn't want he didn't want to have, you know, no conversation. I want, hey, you know, how you, you know, I'm trying to see how we can work. License arrest, okay, you, that's what we own today. I, I got it. So since you got attitude, I'm, I'm going to have one, too. So you ain't going to say nothing. I'm not, anyway, don't do what your pastor do. So, so, so I get this, this ticket, and I um, um, wasn't going too fast, um, ten, 10 over. Um, and, and so uh, I forgot to call so I could set up uh, the defensive driving and stuff. Uh, and so they had sent me a letter, scary letter, because it's like the state of Texas version. I'm like, let me. <laughs> Took me way back. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> like, this is, I need somebody to go with me just in case. <laughs> So anyway, so I get in there today. She, t- I get in there today, and you know, a little nervous because you know, I'm like, man, I, I hadn't, yeah, I had nothing, nothing. I, that's just where I am. So, so, so I'm in there, and uh, there was a young lady who was there who knows. Uh, I don't think she's a member of the church, but she knows I'm a pastor. I don't know who she was. If she's what God, God bless you. And I, when I walked in, I said, God, I want favor today. Just, just, just give me favor. And uh, when I walked in, I, I felt good because. She said, hey, good to see you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Starting off good, so simple. True story, true story. And so by the time I was number nine in line, by the time I got up to see the assistant DA, um, uh, she said, uh, here are your options. She didn't hear what I had to say. I had my speech ready. I was getting ready to throw myself on the mercy of the court. I was ready. <laughs> she said, here's your options. Um, I'm just going to give you a little fine. You don't even have to take defensive driving. It's not going to go on your insurance. You ain't going to have to pay nothing. So when you're walking in the ways of God, not only will he give you favor with God, but he'll give you favor with man. I wish I had some help. And you got to thank God sometimes God will position you with some people who can open up some doors for you, who can smooth out some things for you, some folks who've already walked through what you've walked through and climbed through what you've climbed through and God has positioned them in position so that when you come they'll just let you <laughs> let me stop I'm over time, I'm over time, y'all give God praise in this place My, my prayer, my prayer is, is again, we started with trusting God because we need to know who God is. Number two, trusting God with your life. Really get to a point of faith. And we really won't fully get there until we get to glorification, until life is over. But that if God tells you to walk off a cliff, that you walk and you got to trust that whatever's on the other side is better. That you got to trust the process. And hard days does not mean that you went the wrong way. You get a few little hard days. Oh, the God, this God ain't in it. I knew I shouldn't have married him. It's, it's all. <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't have taken that job. They've been getting on my nerves every day. Amen. Amen. Give God praise. We out of here. Yeah. Well, y'all blessed tonight. Amen. Listen, this Sunday we are going a little further. We're talking about trusting God with your family. Trusting God with your family. And my desire is by the time we get to the end of that passage is to talk about how God can restore and give back what you and I because we're out of position, what we allow to be stolen. Amen. Amen. Give God praise one more time. There may be somebody who's watching. There may be somebody who's online who has never, ever given your life to Christ. Most important invitation any church, any believer can extend. If that's you, you're saying, I've never, I've never been saved. I have I've never given my life to Christ and I want Jesus uh, to be the center of my joy. I want him to be. If that's you, if that's you, if that's you. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Second invitation, you said, I'm saved, but I need a church family. I need a place where I can grow. I need, uh-oh. Oh, oh wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa. I got to tell y'all this story. This was unexpected. Listen, I got to tell y'all this story. So as she's cruising down in this Cadillac, listen, I had to, Dr. Ferguson, I had the privilege of going to their house and doing a, a house blessing. And while we're in the house doing a house blessing, I didn't want to leave because mama was preaching. But here's the blessing. She was just preaching and the wisdom that was coming. Um, and when she told us how old she was, or how many years young she is. Tim again, was it 90 what, mama? How, how old? 91 years old, y'all. Come on, somebody. Can y'all, for real, all online in the same, can you stand and help us celebrate a blessing from the word of God? I just, that he'll give you long life with her faculties and her mind. She sat there and she just blessed us and loved on us. We prayed together. And here we were thinking we're going to bless their house and we leave with our house blessed. And I'm so, so thankful. This is a big surprise. <laughs> and I'm so grateful that you made the decision on tonight. So church, can you all stretch your hand forward? Father, we thank you for the life the blessing we are giving her her name today this is mama here 91 years young so God our prayers that you continue to cover her continue to smile upon her our prayer God is that you bless everything connected to her I pray that you bless her from the top of her head to the sole of her feet that every place the sole of her feet shall tread shall be blessed. And that you blessed her hands as her hands have already touched and blessed everything that they've touched. So that we thank you, God. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, help me celebrate. Come on, close out for me, Rev. I don't know how to close out from this. Come on, come on, oh, come on, come on, close out for me. Come on, thank you. Wow. Can we put those hands together one more time? Amen. Were y'all blessed tonight? Amen. becoming a part of our family. We thank you. Just saying thank you for becoming a part of our family. God bless you. Now it's time to spread the word. Hello, Word family. My name is Sister Ashley Bennett, and I am a part of the Spread the Word team here to spread the word. There are so many awesome things happening here at The Word. Take a look. Hey there, Word family. I am Sister Tara, and I am here to spread the word to the men. Listen, coming up on Saturday, April 27th, a day of fellowship, brotherhood, and fishing. That's right. The real men standing up are going on a fishing trip, man. So all you have to do is go to Realm. You'll register to let them know you're going and then click the link, pay your money and get ready to have a wonderful day of brotherhood, fellowship, fun and fishing. Y'all better bring something back. Ooh, y'all looking 
good. Wait a minute now. Well, what's going on? We having a tea, girl. We're celebrating. One year anniversary. Well, come on out and have some salt tea with us. Enjoy some peppermint tea, some chamomile, yes, hibiscus, even snack on some cucumber canapes or a scone. Whatever yes. your heart desires will be at our tea. So come try a little salty. Okay. Make sure you wear your hats and gloves yes. and find you a nice little Southern Belle dress to throw That's right. on. That's right. We need men to come on out and be a part of this salt ministry. Like Pastor said, ain't no party like a salt party. Season of adults, adults living triumphantly. Y'all don't know what y'all missing with us seasoned saints. Come on now. It's me again, Word Family. Are you a business owner? Are you thinking about starting a business? Have you been doing a hobby, a side hustle? any type of gig and you're like i'm ready to turn this into something real i'm ready to make real income but i don't know what to do listen coming up on may 4th we have something for all of you business owners all of you prospective business owners or anyone who's just thinking about turning an idea into something profitable be on the lookout in realm for more information but i'm letting you know now you do not want to miss this it is going to not only change your life your business but also allow you to make a bigger impact in the community and in the world women of the word we have an amazing event coming up coffee and crafts april 27 from 9 a.m to 12 p.m you will be able to select whatever craft you would like the price ranges from 39 to 59 dollars we will provide coffee water breakfast tacos pastries and tons of fellowship come on ladies come sign up register in realm and get your craft done we'll see you soon Amen. It's time for giving. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? I know a personal story about me that um, even when I had lack, um, I still gave. And God, I can't be God given. He continued to provide for me. So um, here at the Word of God, we have a few ways to give. You can begin preparing your uh, offering and your tithes. Uh, you can give uh, by mailing your uh, your gifts to 17902 Telgi Road, Cypress, Texas. You can give via cash, check, or money order. You can also give electronically by texting WOGCF to 73256, or you can give online at WOGCF.org forward slash giving. Are there any first time visitors on tonight. Any visitors? Amen. We greet you and we thank God that you came out tonight. We pray that you were blessed on tonight and we hope that you would come back and see us again. God bless you. they didn't think I was doing the solo because that's not my ministry. Thank God for that. <laughs> Amen. Um, would you all uh, prepare to stand or stand with me as we prepare to uh, recite our tithes and offering decree? Y'all ready? Let's recite together. Lord, I come to you today to honor you in your house. I present my tithe and offering to you as a gift and sacrifice of honor, and I believe that you will bless me and that my barns will be filled with plenty and my vats will overflow. I stand on your word and act on my faith, and so we declare, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run it over. As we prepare to leave, um, I'll close us out. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for tonight's word. 
We ask you, Lord, as we go out onto these uh, streets and the highways or byways, oh God, that you would prepare us and keep us in all of our ways, oh God. As we depart from this place, never depart from us. Now let's read our, our benediction. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. This is the year of elevation. God bless you. Good night.